Good evening. For more than a year, the President of the United States has claimed the Russia story is a hoax. Now, a stunning indictment says it is not, no matter what the President has been saying again and again and again. The Russia story is a total fabrication. It's just an excuse for the greatest loss in the history of American politics. This Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made-up story. The entire thing has been a witch hunt. How many times do I have to answer this question? Can you just say Russia yes no is on a it? ruse. I've been in office now for 11 months. For 11 months, they've had this phony cloud over this administration, over our government. It's a Democrat hoax that was brought up as an excuse for losing an election that, frankly, the Democrats should have won because they have such a tremendous advantage in the Electoral College. So it was brought up for that reason. Well, keeping them honest, the president's case that this is a witch hunt, a ruse, or a hoax just got weaker. A new string of indictments from Russia's special counsel Robert Mueller's grand jury seized to that. Now, we should say that indictments are not convictions and allegations are not proof. That said, they do pack quite a punch. They hit on a day that saw another alleged Trump mistress and mistress payoff scheme come to light, a day that also saw the FBI admit to fumbling a tip that might have prevented the Parkland school shooting, a day that ends with the president visiting survivors and first responders there tonight. It's been quite another Friday news day, dominated now by the indictment and the president's less than honest reaction to it. The indictment names 13 Russians for meddling in the 2016 presidential election to help make Donald Trump president alleging they communicated with unwitting people tied to the Trump campaign. According to the Department of Justice, not a hoax. And although Jessica Schneider will get into more detail shortly, and so will our panels, here's the nub of it. It alleges that these 13 Russians, including a tycoon known as Putin's chef, using an online organization operating out of St. Petersburg, Russia, conspired to illegally disrupt the very thing that makes a democracy a democracy. Reading from the bill, quote, Defendant organization had a strategic goal to sow discord in the U.S. political system, including the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Defendants posted derogatory information about a number of candidates, and by early to mid-2016, defendants' operations included supporting the presidential campaign of then-candidate Donald J. Trump, Trump campaign, and disparaging Hillary Clinton. According to the Justice Department, not a hoax. Here's Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein announcing the charges. The defendants allegedly used that infrastructure to establish hundreds of accounts on social media networks such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, making it appear that those accounts were controlled by persons located in the United States. They used stolen or fictitious American identities, fraudulent bank accounts, and false identification documents. The defendants posed as politically and socially active Americans advocating for and against particular candidates. They established social media pages and groups to communicate with unwitting Americans. They also purchased political advertisements on social media networks. The Russians also recruited and paid real Americans to engage in political activities, promote political campaigns, and stage political rallies. In other words, not a hoax. A short time later, the president tweeted, and after the tweet, the White House then issued a statement. But first, the tweet, quote, Russia started their anti-U.S. campaign in 2014, long before I announced that I would run for president. The results of the election were not impacted. The Trump campaign did nothing wrong, no collusion. Ten minutes later, the statement from the White House, unlike the tweet, one portion of it does make mention of the country, not just the Trump campaign or his victory or himself. Quote, we must unite as Americans to protect the integrity of our democracy and our elections, says the president in the statement. The rest, though, is along these lines. Quote, it's time we stop the outlandish partisan attacks, wild and false allegations, and far-fetched theories, which only serve to further the agendas of bad actors like Russia and do nothing to protect the principles of our institutions. In other words, Russian meddling isn't the problem. Calling light to the meddling is. Investigating it is, in their opinion. Going by the president's statement, it seems that even saying that it happened damages the very institutions we should be protecting against a threat that has certainly not gone away. And keeping them honest, actually stopping the next attack does not seem to be a priority. Listen to FBI Director Christopher Wray before the Senate just three days ago. Has the president directed you and your agency to take specific actions to confront and blunt Russian influence activities that are ongoing? 
Uh, we're taking a lot of specific efforts to blunt uh, Are Russian they directed effort. by the president. Uh, not, not as specifically directed by the president. So, according to the President Trump's hand-picked FBI director, the president has issued no specific orders to confront another attack on the democratic process. It would almost seem as though the president were focused on something far bigger and far more important, himself, perhaps. Take a look again at the tweet that the president first sent. Decide for yourself. Russia started their anti-U.S. campaign in 2014, long before I announced that I would run for president. The results of the election were not impacted. The Trump campaign did nothing wrong, no collusion. Keep it honest, only the first part is factually correct, and only partially. The indictment itself on page four says their strategic goal was to sow discord in the U.S. political, in the US political system, not just help candidate Trump. So when it began, it doesn't prove anything. As for the president's claim that the indictment says the election's outcome was not impacted, that is completely false, as Rod Rosenstein pointed out. There's no allegation in the indictment of any effect on the outcome of the election. Well, nor does the indictment speak at all, one way or the other, to collusion. There's no allegation in this indictment that any American had any knowledge. No allegation in this indictment. The deputy attorney general used that phrase or variations of it a number of times, suggesting perhaps there may be other indictments of other people in this matter or beyond, something the indictment itself suggests. I'm quoting from page two. From in or around 2014 to the present, defendants knowingly and intentionally conspired with each other and with persons known and unknown to the grand jury to defraud the United States by impairing, obstructing, and defeating the lawful functions of the government through fraud and deceit for the purpose of interfering with the U.S. political and electoral processes, including the presidential election of 2016. With persons known and unknown to the grand jury. We'll ask our legal experts more about that, but perhaps that most damning indictment, to borrow a word of the president's claim of vindication, is plain to see to anyone who follows the news, and we know this president does obsessively. This indictment only addresses one aspect of the Russia affair, the social media influence operation, not the hacking of the DNC nor the leaking of dirt about John Podesta and Hillary Clinton, not Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with the Russians promising such dirt, nor his excitement about it, nor Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort's role in it, nor Manafort's money ties to Russian-linked organizations, nor anything former campaign advisor George Papadopoulos might be saying to special counsel Mueller now that he's a cooperating witness, nor what Manafort deputy Rick Gates may say if, as we're now reporting, he consummates a deal with the special counsel. Today's indictments, which are significant in their own right, say nothing about that. They only add to a body of evidence that whatever else this investigation adds up to, it is certainly not over certainly clears no one, least of all the president, and it certainly is no hoax. Joining us now with more of all this is CNN's Jessica Schneider. So, Jessica, just walk us through exactly what is in this indictment. Anderson, this is a 37-page exhaustive examin examination of how 13 Russian nationals orchestrated what this indictment calls, quote, information warfare against the United States. And really, the goal here was simple. Damage Hillary Clinton and elect Donald Trump. And these Russians allegedly went to great lengths. They started this operation back in 2014, and several of them at that point even traveled here to the United States. They posed as Americans as well as U.S. social activists, and they talked to people here, and they learned from that that they should focus their efforts in those so-called purple states like Colorado, Virginia, Florida. And even the Russians operating abroad, they also faked American identities and they launched social media events and hashtags. And they even wired money on several occasions to grassroots political groups who were holding events right here in the U.S. You know, this operation, it spanned years. It also had hundreds of employees in Russia. They even worked shifts that coordinated with U.S. time zones to send out their messaging. And the budget for this organization allegedly totaled millions of dollars each year. And, you know, Anderson, the indictment even says that they reached out to Trump campaign officials via email on at least, at least three occasions. But we did hear from the deputy attorney general today. He made the point to say, of course, that there is no allegation in this indictment that any American was a knowing participant in any of this alleged illegal activity. That presumably, of course, includes the Trump campaign. Anderson? Right. In this particular indictment, what right. does this mean for Mueller's larger investigation? Well, this is really the first time that the special counsel has laid all of this out in detail 
how the Russians interfered in this 2016 election. Of course, that was part of the special counsel's probe to look into Russia meddling in addition to any possible collusion with the Trump campaign. So up to this point, and especially today, Robert Mueller's team, they have been very systematic in how they presented their case, their indictments, arranged these guilty pleas. And really, this indictment, Anderson, as I said, it was 37 pages. It shows just how intricate their work has been, how wide-ranging it is, and how many detailed facts that they have already uncovered here. So it does remain to be seen, and it, it begs the question, how much more of this is yet to come?